Hey, it's Chris McCord, and today I'm just going to talk a little bit about my Emacs Evil Mode setup. So Evil Mode is a Vim emulation layer in Emacs, and it's incredible. I'm blown away by how comprehensive it is, and calling it Vim emulation to me uh, feels wrong because it's full Vim. It does everything that I could ever have dreamt of compared to a Vim emulation layer, and it feels like a improved version of Vim in Emacs, which is... Um, pretty surprising to say. Uh, so, you know, this isn't going to change your life if you're a Vim user. I'm just going to walk you through uh, from a Vim user's perspective that's using Emacs in Evil Mode. Um, it's not, there's not an insanely compelling reason to switch, um, but for me, I really think it gives me the best of both worlds. I get all of Vim, all my key bindings I've replicated, I found equivalent packages, and everything just seems to be a little bit smoother. A little bit faster, a, a little bit uh, smoother operation. The plugins seem to be a little bit nicer. Um, Emacs is running Emacs Lisp underneath instead of, you know, like VimScript is a little bit limited. Uh, so I think things that uh, can be more concurrent in, e in Emacs Lisp a little easier. Um, but you, I can thank my coworker, David Stump. Uh, he replicated uh, quite a bit of my Vim setup that got me to initially try it out. And uh, now I, I've replicated everything wholesale. This is my Vim setup in Emacs almost uh, to a T. Uh, so I'll just walk you through here a little bit. You know, I, all my key bindings like HJKL obviously are going to work. Um, you know, this is from a Vim user's perspective. The only native thing I know how to do in Emacs is to quit. With like Control C, Control, or Control X, Control C. Other than that, I have no idea what I'm doing in Emacs, but it's a testament to how full uh, the Vim emulation is that I, I have no idea how to use Emacs but I'm able to use it um, productively and use all of Emacs that I want to use uh, within uh, Evil Mode. Uh, so everything works like you'd expect. Um, I have uh, a plugin called NeoTree that works a lot like NerdTree, uh, but it's a lot less quirky than NerdTree. Uh, so everything works as you would expect. It even acts like a buffer uh, like NerdTree does. Uh, so I can you know, search for things, uh, but I don't end up accidentally opening files and I break my NerdTree uh, buffer usually once a day in Vim and have to quit out of Vim because of it. I've noticed a little bit of smoother operation with NeoTree. And, um, you know, I can navigate with GH in between splits. Uh, so I have like a leader VS bound to a vertical split. I can navigate between them just like you would expect. And, uh, you know, I can, um, similar to Control-P, I'm using a plugin called Projectile. So I can say leader T and uh, open up a quick uh, fuzzy match on files and it's nice that it kind of highlights uh, as I type uh, the different um, patterns of the file that it's matching. Uh, it seems to be very quick and uh, works as you would expect. And then we have a command bar on the bottom here uh, just like Vim and you know I can just type you know buff delete get rid of that buffer and uh, everything just seems to work and even things that are I'm surprised that like um, you know more obscure Vim commands that I would I think to myself, there's no way that evil mode gets this right. It, it just works. Uh, so if you go to the bottom of the file here, we can see that I'll just record a quick macro and show you how I can play it across several lines. Uh, so if I record a macro here, uh, let's say I want to change um, map to dict here. And then I also want to change uh, channel st the string argument to uh, a symbol. So I recorded that macro, and then let's say I want to replay it. So I can just uh, replay it uh, across this line here. And that just works. Uh, but then there are more obscure things I can do. Like uh, if I visually select these three lines, um, just like in Vim, I can go into the command bar and select a range here. And then I, I can use the G command, just like in Vim, to say, you know what? Across each line, I want to, in normal mode, replay the macro that I've stored in the A register. And it just works. Uh, so stuff like that, I'm just blown away that Emacs uh, Evil Mode has just fully replicated Vim, and it's incredibly Okay, another neat thing I can show you is Emacs has a first class package manager that's built in. Uh, so let's say I'm browsing a code base, and I'll open up a CoffeeScript file, and uh, oh no, you know, I don't have a CoffeeScript package built in. Uh, so in Vim, I'm using Vundle, to handle my uh, packages and it works, uh, but it's a little bit clunky and you know there's a bunch of different package managers. Um, some of them interop together, the way they handle things are arbitrary, but in Emacs it's all just built in. Uh, so let's say you know I'm in this CoffeeScript file, I really want syntax highlighting. 
Uh, so I can just, uh, with Smex, say I want to uh, package install. I'll type in the package name. Uh, we'll say coffee, and I'll tap complete. And I get a tab complete list. It looks like coffee mode is available. That sounds promising. And it's going to fetch the package and compile it for me. And that's it. It was that fast. So now I can rerun the smex command. And you can see that coffee mode is now available as a command. I'm going to enable that. And boom. There we go. I have coffee script support now. And it fetched it and installed it. And it was that simple. So pretty cool. All right, so the last feature I want to show you is uh, I've been using Emacs Evil Mode to write my metaprogramming Elixir book, um, which has been uh, really great because before I've been using just GUI applications, um, but I miss my Vim key bindings. And I've always tried to replicate some kind of nice writing experience in Vim, um, but any plugins I found or configuration just didn't get the line wrapping right, and it was just a clunky experience. Um, but let's see what it's like in Emacs. Uh, so I have a blog post open here. You know, the lines aren't wrapped at all by default. It's just a plain text file. Uh, let's see what we can get this to look like. Um, we'll just enable a couple modes. So uh, evil or Emacs has uh, modes we can apply. So I want to apply a few modes on top of each other. I can say, let's enable long lines mode. And all right, we get a nice um, wrapped lines. And then we can apply multiple modes together. Uh, so there's this nice package called a uh, write room mode. It's just going to like center everything for a nice editing experience. So now I can use my uh, Vim key bindings to navigate around the paragraphs and it just works nicely. Whereas in Vim, whenever I got line wrapping to work correctly, uh, if I would hit J right here, it would hop to the in end of the paragraph and I never could get it, get it quite right. And uh, it's just a very nice editing experience. I can just use my Vim key bindings and uh, things work uh, pretty well. And uh, another neat thing I've been finding is I'm using a lot less um, um, bindings than I normally would in Vim. So let's say uh, for spelling and grammar, for example, if I misspell the word uh, elegant here, it's going to highlight it for me. But in Vim, instead of having a, a command that would uh, try to autocorrect this word, I'm just using smex uh, quite a bit. So I can say leader x, and then I'll use a fly spell autocorrect word, and it just corrected it for me. Uh, so I'm finding the uh, experience in Emacs to just be super smooth. And like I said, it's not going to change your life, but I really feel like it's given me the best of both worlds. It's really all of Vim, everything I had in Vim, uh, plus all the nice uh, packages and a full-blown uh, Emacs Lisp programming language underneath that I can get in. And I've al already been able to hack through my own plugins in two weeks of Emacs Lisp uh, versus being in Vim for two years and never really being able to get into Vim script. All right, uh, so that's all I have. Uh, so like I said, it's not um, going to be a amazingly different experience, uh, but if you're a Vim user, uh, go ahead and check it out and you might be surprised. Uh, so I'll link my uh, Emacs uh, configuration uh, in the video description and let me know what you think. Thanks a lot.